Okay. Um, okay. <clears throat> While we're recording it, um, let me just share my screen. Can you, can you, can you see my screen fine, yeah? Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. Okay. Can we, yeah. So the design of the site is something that obviously we haven't touched for. It's just purely to get some, some information from the accounting software. Um, to see how the products look, to see how they're going to work on the store. Um, then we can also set up the accessibility controls for some of the different products and see how that works as well. So what I've done so far is we've got all the products through from the accounting software. There's 35,634 items. Um, for the final uh, of the site, we'd, we'd want to select some of these items to not export to the web. And the reason for this is that if, you, if you're not actually selling these items and there's a lot of archived items, it's going to slow your sync time, sync times down significantly. Um, so we want to just um, um, select some of those items to say uh, in evolution, you can not export them to web. Does that make sense? Yeah, is, uh, because what we're going to do is we're in the process of doing a purge of what? Okay. We, we've purged uh, two years worth of transactional information, but now um, they're going to go through our parts listing as well and see what hasn't sold as well and get rid of those part items. Okay. So it's going to do the database cleanup. It's going to half our database base. Okay, perfect. Um, well, it just means that everything is going to run faster and yeah, just be more efficient. So great. Yeah, as well. Um, I can say confidently, currently without the purge. We have about 15,000 line items of parts that we want to uh, move through this platform. So um, what we would need to do then is to decrease it even further is we would need to do category groups. Or how would it work? Um, you mean on, on the front end or, or in pastel? In pastel. So we've got categories set up mm -hmm. for each of them. Um, so we've got uh, all for our line items. So we will have parts and whole goods separated in different categories. Okay. I can give you, let's say 10 categories out of 20, and those are all the parts that you're going to have to pull through. So it will be probably less than 10,000 line items. Okay. So, okay, so, so what, what we'll do there is, um, in, in evolution, you can select those categories and then bulk select them by category um, to say export to web or don't export to web. It, it's, it's purely a function of um, exposing the data to the connected services app so our store can see it. It won't affect anything else in your account software. Um, there's a little button in, uh, sorry, a, a, a checkbox in evolution that, that um, says export to Sage Online Tools. And then you can just select that or, or deselect it depending on if you want to want to access to the products in the store. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. So I've bought through a couple of products over here. Um, what I'm do sorry, I just wanted to ask with the current line items that you have on the website, how long did it take to export? You mean these uh, nine items over here? Uh, the 35,000. Um, I'm not actually sure because the, the technician who set it up, he only informed me once, once the, 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 the items were there. Um, I can I can ask him and find out, but um, it'll probably be like an hour or something, or thirty minutes or forty minutes. It'll be it's, it's, it's quite a lot of data to pull through. Um, but if you if you have you know anything under fifteen, that that's that's workable. I mean, it's 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 not not workable. It's just the store won't sync as fast as you may like it to. So if you're prepared to you know not have an uh, you know very uh, uh, short sync time, then it's also fine. It's just, you know, um, I need to advise you on that. So down the line, we don't have an issue of you saying, oh, but the store's not sinking fast enough. And then, you know, we've got, you know, 50,000 line items, for example, that don't need to be there. Okay. Okay, um, okay so, so what I've done is I've created two product categories. Um, I've just added a generic picture and a you know, generic description. So we've got the quad bikes, which I've just, um, you know, um, Merchandise with all the same pictures, it's the same as time. So this is the normal tiled format, and then you've got the um, products in a quick order style grid, um, where the user can say, "I want two of those, three of those, six of those, and then add to cart." Um, and then when they process a order, then 
great, it'll come through to evolution as your sales order. Okay. Um, if we go to the customers tab over here, we can see a list of your customers that have pulled through from Pascal, it's 500, 521 items. Um, it would be nice just for this demonstration to, to, to edit one of these customers. Are you by any chance one of these customers listed in here? Like in their banks, in the bank, where's Okay, never mind. Um, okay, okay. So, so, so what what would happen here is you would invite, for example, um, Nigel Brankis. You'd invite him. Um, he would then go to the online store. He'd log in. Actually, let, let's let, let's just edit his details quickly. Um, so I can say um, edit. And this one push information back into best. No, no. This this is purely for use on on the online store. So, um, wait. Let, let me just use Leonie. Um, so. This is what your customer would see when you invite them to the store. They'd come here and set a password, and then the email address is going to default to what they have in Pascal. Obviously, we use that email address to 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 find that account. Uh, and if if they do change it here, then it'll be a problem for us because then we don't know who the customer is. But that's that's fine. Okay. So great. So now you can see I've I've logged in as Leonie van Us Us Vegan. Um, I can then access now my different pricing structures and, and potentially different categories if we choose to set an option up. So if, for example, I go to, um, let's see, the only one I speak in, so they category T. Yeah? Can I point that You see yeah, there sure. Nigel Branky and Jason. Sorry, I don't have control of your screen. Mm -hmm. You see Nigel Branky's and then the points and Jason is afterwards. Yes. What do you have? What would happen in a scenario like that? We we um so currently currently in evolution you've you've added a double contact into one field. You need to separate that contact out because you can only have one one email address per customer account for the store. Okay. Yeah. But un unfortunately, in Sage as well. So what we do is in our warehousing, um, mm -hmm. when we pick parts. Uh, we send it, a copy of the invoice through to those email addresses. So one of them might be a uh, accounts lady that deals mm -hmm. with uh, creditors and the other one might be a parts manager. For example. So that's okay. why you would have, if you look at a Shapira and Sharon, you know, someone edited that incorrectly. There's no comma point between the two. So, yes. But you will not be able to take that out because there's no functionality in Sage to have, you know, divide accounts and service, for example, in two different contexts. Okay. Uh, same. Oh, no, I was, I was going to say that there should be multiple different contexts that you could have within that. Yeah, I mean, yeah. You, you know. So we need to explore and find out if there are multiple contexts that we can set up. Yeah, uh, let me let me ask my my technician about that. He's he usually advises me on this kind of stuff. Um, I'm not too sure what fields you would, would populate in Pascal, but from what I remember from previous customers, they they added a additional contact, which when you send a statement would, would uh, you know include both uh, 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 contacts on the account. I mean, yeah. it, it 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 would be silly to have to group them into one field. Yeah, anyway, um, I've made notes that I'll look at it. Um, okay, so okay. Let's go back here. So. If we, if we want to give different types of customers access to different types of products, what we do here is, so let's say for example, quad bike tiled is, um, so I just edited a uh, customer category T. Let's go to setup, um, settings, category, okay. So quad bikes tiled. So I can say, I can change the permissions now to say if I want it to be public, or to be visible only to, was it category? T. Save. 
And then for this one, for quad bike quick order, we'll say, what's that one? It's category. You have T and then C, no? Eh? Or let's just check. Yeah. Um, yeah. Customers, yeah, T and C. So products, oops, set up categories. Okay, so now, now I've assigned them, um, um, this customer can see category T and then this one can, uh, can see customer category C. So you can have multiple groups of um, permissions per the, the different uh, past listings over here. Um, the reason why we want to do something like this is that your customer who's only going to be ordering, let's say for example, um, farming uh, you know, equipment or related products may not want to see all your marine or other type products. Um, which is sort of helps them narrow their focus and narrows the amount of products that they need to go through um, in order to 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 place a order um, back to your client software. Um, what what these customer so what the customers are is these are your data categories in pastel and um, that's that's what we use to drive the the the, the um, customer. Um, access the, the, the category access in the store um, what you don't see here is the price list the price lists are automatically imported behind the scene so i'm logged in as leone um, if i add this item to my card now um, the styling's a bit funny we just need to change the store settings quickly just so we can, can do it uh, set up settings so i'm going to show the available stock ones to always um, Rent uh, order, so so never, um, never, always, always. So, check that's about retail. Should we finish this? Okay, so now what I did was I ignored the stock levels for this product, so I can just just for the purpose of the demo show you how it works. So if I add this item to the cart, um, and then click on the cart, and I check out, um, you'll see here we've pre-populated the um, delivery details of the customer, so that they don't need to complete this information every time they process an order. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, for shipping, I can't remember from our last discussion whether you, whether the cost of shipping was built into the products, but they would then have an option here to select their preferred delivery method if it was over and above your standards, you know, free shipping. I seem to remember you saying that the standard delivery was free, and then if they wanted to expedite, they could pay more. Am I correct? Yes, you are correct. Okay. So then, then we set up the different uh, career details over here. Um, for the payment details, we would have a default one called on account where they would be able to buy um, strictly on account only. Um, we could also have a payment gateway option here if, if you wanted to ask them to pay. If for whatever reason you also want to sell to the retail public at some point, we can make it so that the payment options um, are different to the logged in customers compared to the retail customers. So a retail customer, the Joe Sokin Street, would have to select a valid payment method like credit card or direct EFT or master pass, whatever. Um, and then on the customers that log in like we are now, they'll, they'll, they'll then get the on account option, which wouldn't be there for the retail customer. Make sense? Yeah. Uh, also, I've got a question there. Um, hmm? Is there any area in here where we can specify a PO number or get a quotation PO number? Um, they, they would need to, so we can't add custom fields to this form, but what we would do is we'd add a notification over here saying, um, for purchase order numbers, please put it in the message comment field. Okay. Um, so if they do <coughs> comment field now, we've got in the sales order entry section, of, of pastel, there is an external order number field. Will it then yeah. populate? Um, it would, I can't remember. I think, I think it will put it in the, where will it put it now? Um, I'm trying to think. 
I think we'll put it in the comments section from what I remember. I have to check. Let me just make a note of that now. Because um, now the whole the whole benefit of this is having this this whole process automated. Hmm. Um, external order number. We're also looking at pastel, looking at duplicated order numbers and it's, or external order numbers um, because it helps with our, our, our credits and, and stock coming back and double, you know, orders being placed at the back, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. So it's not, too, it's not going to be beneficial if we don't populate that field as well. Yeah. 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 Okay. I know that I asked the technician about that as well. Um, so, okay, so if you if you then place this order, it will then obviously get logged under this customer's account. So, yeah, the only one asked you. Um, if, if it was a cash customer, then it would obviously go to the uh, default cash customer bank and that will select when the store gets set up. Um, and then, yeah, so you will then get an email, customer will get an email. Um, let's just, I'm just going to, let's just place this order now. Oops, this was crazy. Uh, I haven't specified a payment option here, so it might form. Yeah. Oh yes, yeah, so I got this error message as well. We'll play it around. Yeah, I, I, I'm sorry, I haven't added the payment method. Um, so let's create a payment method cookie. So let's create new. Um, just call it EFT. EFT. Cards, there we go. Um, there we go. So, there's our EFT test order, place an order, and then that should then get pushed back to Pastel. So, what, what we'll do is um, create an order reference number, which, which will tie back to it's, it's purely for tracking the orders that get placed in the store. Um, just refresh this page with you. And the order reference number is obviously unique to you. Yeah. You can't, you can't generate, and then I got an email as well. So, so what, what we do is the order reference number that gets generated here is not something you can hook up to Pastel. And the reason for that is we don't know what number sequence Pastel currently has. So it's not, it's not, so if, if, your, if your pastel's on, let's say invoice, you know, five, six, seven, eight, um, we won't be able to automatically make it five, six, seven, nine, um, because we don't know what pastel's currently at when, when the order gets placed. So, so, so we use this, um, we, we use a self-generated number here, which is a, um, order reference number one, which your, cust which your customer can then use to track the order. So if they call in, in Pastel, it'll have a reference number of one. Um, and then this is the, essentially the details that gets pushed through to Pastel. So the line item, the pricing that was allocated to the customer, We've got obviously the billing address, shipping address, um, yeah, email information that's you know would get sent would be uh, to um, You can also manually resend the email out if the customer you know they, they didn't receive it. Um, you can also click here to view it, so you can see um, the customer's account. So, so it's T S T E O three. Um, the code it shows their payment method, test delivery. Um, Sorry, shipping method and then payment. So obviously, if it's you know overnight express, then you need to action the, the order ASAP. Um, mm -hmm. Then what else? Um, yeah, that's pretty self-explanatory. Obviously, um, when your logo logo gets loaded up, it'll pull through over here. And it's obviously, um, on ramp. Um, okay, what else? I'm gonna show you. Um, what else? So the let's just go back to the site quickly. So if I go to <coughs> if 
right click order. So if we have products that have dimensions, i.e. you've got the Sportsman's 550FI green, um, I see you've got the different options as well. So uh, 450 green would be a dimension of the Sportsman's EFI product. So here, for example, we've got, um, or we can make them separate products. So 550 EFI, 550 EFI EPS green. I'm not sure what EPS stand, stands for, but we could make it an option. So instead of having um, five separate products, they would be listed as one product, but then the customer would choose the, the, the dimension. So they might choose 570 EPS or the 570 TRG or 550, 570 XP or something. Um, so you need to tell us also when we do the merchandising, what type of um, product display or groupings would you like? Does it make sense? Or am I confusing everyone here? No, no, makes perfect sense. Okay. Um, yeah, so, so that's, I mean, that's essentially how the, the ordering process will, will work for the customers. Obviously, um, you can have, you know, a very extensive category list here. Um, I would I would recommend looking at doing the um, customer categories, so different types of customers can see certain types of products. Um, we found from the B two B ordering that if they're not going to order it, rather don't even put it there or make it available to them. It, it just makes them confused. They might order something that they didn't really want or was not not pertinent to the you know, whatever that they're doing. Um, Okay, what else? Yeah, so that's, I'm not sure what else to show you, but that's kind of the, the sort of actual, the usability of the store. Um, we can have many different category levels. We can have, um, obviously, that, that, that mega menu, so we hover over here and you can navigate directly to the product. Um, what else should we do? Um, okay, so if you click into the, right, let's go here, box tile. So if you click into a product, then we can also have related products. So for example, um, Sportsman 570 EFI, you could have the you know, a helmet or a gloves or the oil or the filter or a, or a service kit or something. Um, One of those, the so people who bought this also were interested in yeah. the Yes, 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 oh, yeah. Pardon? How would you link those? How would you show them related products? Okay, let me show you quickly. Um, so, it's 450 green, I guess, this out here. So, if we add a related product, we can say, I want to associate with that one, that one, and that one, and that one. Save. Okay, so, yeah. so, if I refresh it. Okay, I'm looking, wait, I'm looking at the wrong products with the 450. Then you have your related products over here, and then you have a, a blurb about, about the product. Um, if we wanted to add, let's say, um, a gallery, we could do that as well. So, um, images, image light box. Yeah, there we go. So here I've manually created um, a sort of a, a, a gallery uh, pictures. If you have products with dimensions, i.e. the Sportsman's 450 in green, black, blue, red, orange, etc., uh, and you've got different dimensions selected for those, then they'll, then they'll automatically appear as images below this product with the relevant color um, associated to that SKU code. So I could, I could then um, if I selected the red one and then the engine size of 450, it would, it would then come up with the red one engine size 450 picture as well, which is pretty cool. Um, and then this, this is obviously if you just want to add some more additional information about the product. It could be a spec sheet, um, maybe, maybe an image of a spec sheet. If you added a, um, a PDF link, then it would also include the PDF link here as a button saying, you know, click here to download PDF or something like that, a product PDF where they would um, have a spec sheet to view, which is pretty nice. Um, you can have product reviews as well. So if we activate it, oh, sorry, I'm so lucky, but I'll 
And then you can have product reviews, they um, go into tabs over here. You can also get a quick quote function. So if we add a form, let's just go to the e-commerce setup settings. Um, get quick quotes. So. <clears throat> so, if for example the customer doesn't want to uh, purchase it, they just want to inquire about it. Maybe they're a, a new customer. Um, what what we can do is we can hide this add to cart button and also the pricing, and only show a quick quote form to the customers so that they can't actually place a order, which will then get um, sent back through to the accounting software. It'll purely be as a display, um, a brochure displaying site where they can view all the products and then if they want to become a, you know, a, uh, a account customer of yours, then we can create a button in the menu or somewhere here or even on the site to say, you know, click here to register to become a customer. They can then submit all the um, um, company registration documents, maybe a VAT clearance, I'm not sure what you need to, be, uh, to sign up to supply with you. But that's also an option as well where we hide all the relevant information. So high price, high stock availability, um, or we can show stock availability and then just hide the add to cart button so the, the person can see if it's in stock but they can't order it. So there's many different ways of um, flavoring the store in terms of accessibility to your um, retail man on the street customer. Or we can say, look, hide all the products to all customers regardless of um, um, if you're logged in. So, sorry, if, if you're a cash customer. If you're logged in, then you can then obviously see all the products. So, I mean, there's, there's many different ways to do it. If you're a new customer and you, um, if you need to create a login first before you can see all of the content. Is that how you'd want to do it? Well, it's, it might be for the marketing team because they want to gather information about the customers, you know? Um, and if they then ask for have a comprehensive, well, list to your name, email, contact details, everything. But do you not think it's a good idea though if you have, a, have the prices and everything, just look at it, but when he wants to place the order, then it pops up and says, well, this information well, sheet, and then... Yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's not my fault, so that's what I'm saying. So what yeah. options do you have? Is, yeah. it, is it, can you have... Sorry, mm -hmm. just just say that last sentence again. It just, it just broke up for a second there. Sorry, I said, can you have either or? So either they log in or they don't, and then enter the details once you request the quote. Um, yeah, you, you can do that. So so we could. I, I I would caution against showing pricing because you are in the in the in the dis distribution space. I would definitely not put pricing down. Okay. You know, it's it's an information gathering exercise. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, I mean, we we could make a pop up form here, uh, form here when you click on something, um, they submit the information. Um, that's that's how I would do it. I mean, like you said, you want to gather as much information as possible. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, yeah. But there's many many different ways to configure the store, so you can really. Tailor it to, 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 to suit your needs. Um, the order confirmation email that gets sent out, you can obviously personalize it here with your banking details, or you can um, list the, 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 the payment terms. Um, we can. Spotted that, so we can also do product reviews here. Um, so if the person goes here, no reviews, they enter the name, details, and they select if they want to register, uh, rate it, uh, you know, good or bad, or, and then leave a comment. And that, that comment will get listed under the product reviews, which is sort of a nice feature. Um, yeah, I think that's one of the store functionality uh, side. I'm just going to find out on the information regarding the sales order number. So if they enter into the comments field, where does that get pulled, pushed through to you? Um, if if it doesn't push through to the um, purchase order field automatically, um, would it be feasible to just edit the invoice and copy and paste it from the comments section into the purchase order number field? 
when you say when you say you need manual intervention to change it, is that what you're saying? Yeah. Oh, we're going to need to talk. We're going to well. I, I'll need to speak to the the, the parts guys, and we need to review the process currently. Yeah. And, and yeah. So, it's so a conversation so, you, you should yeah. have. Can 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 I ask you to to process a couple of transactions with customers that um, that we've got over here? Um, so use the Leone um, Aswegen customer process the transaction, see how the order comes through to to the evolution test database, um, and then I will or I will give you a preview link to the site with the, those customers' login details that I set. And then you can process the transaction, see where the fields get pulled through, um, see where the delivery address gets pulled through, make sure that is all working fine, and then see what type of um, manual process involved in capturing that sales, uh, the, the, sorry, the purchase order number from the uh, invoices, uh, sorry, purchase order comments section to, sorry, sales order comments section into the purchase order field. Um, I mean, it, it shouldn't be a big thing, but just as long as we've automatically captured the rest information, it, it, it could be workable. So yeah, you'll just need to uh, test that for me. I'm not sure that it does go straight through to the purchase order field automatically, so um, that just needs to be tested. Okay, and then Sean, you'll find out about the multiple contexts. Yeah, no, no, so sorry, the two things I wanted to know. Um, so one, how do you deal with customers that put multiple contexts? I mean, so and not the company. Because like in, for instance, in Evolution, you've got the option for people <coughs> And as a customer, and then you've got all, and then in terms of contact details for a customer, yeah, I think there's two different places where you can have contact details. Hmm. Uh, where does it draw that information from? Though? I think it's probably the biggest thing. Um, I'm not 100% I'm sure. I've, I've got this here's a point to ask the tech guy, but I'm, I would assume it pulls from the primary contact, um, and then you've got the second and third uh, contacts on the, on the accounts as well that you can add. I just need to check with the tech guy. That, that's that, that's one of my points to follow up on. And then the other thing is, is can you use the second contact or not instead of the the primary one? Because I, uh, asking that is because we we've, we've got a WMS system that's using the primary contact, and it's a it's a pain to get them to develop and make changes and a massive cost. If we exploring something here where we can use a secondary contact just mm -hmm. for of a, a order, you know, and that would be perfect. Yeah. Okay, let me find so, so I was asking if it's possible if you can or not. We, I mean, I think we default to the primary contacts on the account. Um, so it, it might be a case of just swapping them around in evolution manually, uh, or like, or doing an export and then just, uh, uh, changing the, the contacts uh, um, primary to, to the secondary contacts. Um, let me, I'm going to ask the, the, the tech guy as well on this. Yeah. And then there's another way that we can force that, that comments, do we force that comments field then if they want to place an external order? They have to put a place an external order then in the bank payment. Just define an external order, you mean a non-account customer? And now if, if they place an order, can you force them to populate that field? They Which field? The comment section. Um, I don't think we can force them to. Um, but what we can do is make it very, very obvious with a, you know, a, a, a red, you know, a, a red notification over here saying, "Please put PO number in comments field." We've got a couple of stores that are are using that currently, and and customers do seem to um, adhere to that quite well. It's not it's not ideal, but yeah, it's just, I tell you, it's it's very complicated to change anything here because it's all so intertwined. <coughs> Um, okay. Um, okay, cool. So I've got I've got a couple of questions to ask my tech guy and I'll get back to you on that. Um, what I'll do following this meeting is send you a recording, so a link to the recording, and then also the, the, the login details for this um, Leone Asvirchen customer, so you can log in and actually process a couple um, orders. 
Um, you do have access to this um, Smith Power account. Um, if not, you can just, I'll, I'll edit the, the details um, and then you can log in and, and, and um, do your own password resets on one of the customers to, to, to test it out as well. So you've got full access to use, use the system. Um, okay, uh, otherwise, questions, anything else, guys? Yeah, that was it for me. Okay, cool. Um, right, Sean, you good? Yeah, as long as my customer is happy, I'm happy too. Okay, brilliant. Cool. Um, yeah, let, let me just uh, put together the email and I'll send to you guys as soon as we finish. All right. Awesome Thank stuff. you. Cool. All right, cheers, guys. Thanks, Bill. Cheers, Bill. Bye. Bye.